hello everyone in this video we are going to see about compaction in the compaction factor is mainly considered for the increasing the supporting capacity and course of the stability of the soil compaction of the soil is defined as the process by which the soil particles are artificially rearranged and packed together by some mechanical means in order to increase the unit weight of the soil. This is achieved by the forcing of the soil solids to move closer due to the expulsion of air from the voids. This is usually accomplished by rolling or tamping. Next we are going to see compaction versus consolidation. When compared to compaction versus consolidation, there are three similarities are there at the end at the end of the both the process itself. The first one, a closer packing of soil grains results. Second one, shear strength increased in both compaction and consolidation. Third one, compressibility and permeability decreased in both compaction and consolidation. Now we are going to see the difference between compaction and consolidation. When we consider compaction, it is almost instantaneous. But when we compare it to consolidation, it is a time dependent one. In consolidation, it occurs due to the reduction of air voids. But in the case of consolidation, it occurs due to the expulsion of pore water from voids. So, compaction means reduction of air voids. Consolidation means expulsion of pore water. In compaction, the soil is unsaturated one. But when we compare it to consolidation, the soil is saturated one. In compaction, for a specific compaction energy, the compaction of the solid takes place only up to a certain limiting water content. But in the case of consolidation, no limiting value of moisture content for the consolidation. And also, the Proctor developed the relationship between dry density and water content and compactive effect by the conducting tests on soil specimens. The relationship between dry density and water content is shown in the below figure and it is called compaction curve. Compaction curve is plotted for water content versus dry density. In this case, water content taken as x axis and dry density taken as a y axis. The maximum density obtained is called maximum dry density that is MDD. The water content corresponding to this MDD is called optimum moisture content OMC. So in this graph we will see the maximum dry density MDD that corresponding water content is called wet side of optimum OMC. From that graph we are observing the following points. For a given compactive effect, the dry density of soil first increases with increase in water content. Beyond a certain value of water content, the trend is reversed. And second one, the degree of saturation is always less than 100% even at a high value of water content. We already mentioned first increased dry density and then it is reversed. The reason for the increase and then decrease in the dry density can be explained as follows. Addition of water to begin with the facilitates easier movement of particles and their closest packing. Therefore an increase in the soil density. But beyond a certain limit of the water level becomes the excessive and tends to occupy the space which otherwise would have been occupied by the soil particles resulting in a decrease in the dry density. The following are the generally found in important effects of compaction. Compaction increases the dry density of the soil in turn increasing its shear strength and its bearing capacity. Compaction reduces the permeability of the soil and also it reduces the settlement of the soil. Next we are going to see the effective compactive effects. Effect of compactive efforts. Increase in the compaction energy will result in an increasing in the maximum dry density and decrease in the optimum moisture content. These are the effect of 
compactive efforts. Next we are going to see zero air white line. It is a very important one. Zero air white line is nothing but is a plot between dry density and water level corresponding to the degree of saturation of 100 percentage or zero air whites. This curve represents an, an upper bound for dry unit weight and the moisture density line cannot cross this line. It is said to be theoretical because it can never be reached in practice as it is impossible to expel the air in the pores completely by the process of compaction. The zero air white density uh, for any moisture content can be calculated from the following equations. Gamma D is equal to G rho W divided by 1 plus E where E is equal to W G divided by S and where G is a specific gravity E is a white ratio Gamma W is a density of water we know and S is the degree of saturation that is equal to 100% in this case. Next we are going to see the types of laboratory compaction test. There are a lot of uh, laboratory compaction tests are available namely standard proctor test for light compaction, modified proctor test for heavy compaction, Harvard miniature compaction test, Abbott's compaction test, Jodhpur Pini compaction test and Indian standard compaction test. Next we are going to see the Harvard miniature compaction test. This compaction test is achieved by cleaning action of cylinder tamper 12.7 mm in dia. The mold has a volume of 62.4 cm cube. The tamper operates through a compression spring so that the tamping force is controlled not to exceed a certain predetermined value for different soils and different compactive efforts desired. The number of layers and the number of tampings and tamping force may be varied. In such or field compaction, for any construction job which requires soil is to be used as a foundation material Compaction in situ or in the field is necessary. Soil compaction can be achieved by different means such as tamping action, kneading action, vibration and impact. Compaction equipment operating on the tamping, kneading or impact principle are effective in the case of cocosy soils. While those operating on the kneading, tamping or vibratory principle are the effective in the case of cocosionless soils. The primary type of compaction equipments are rollers, rammers and vibrators. Out of these most of the common are rollers. Rollers are further classified as three types namely smooth wheeled roller. These are the compaction by static compression to the soil. Next one pneumatic tire roller. It is compaction by kneading action. Next one sheep foot roller. This compaction is achieved by combination of tamping and kneading. Next we are going to see the relative compaction. The results of laboratory compactions are not directly applicable to field compaction because the equipment used in the field is different as well as no lateral confinement is possible in the field compaction. The relative compaction is defined as the relative compaction that is equal to field dry density gamma d divided by maximum dry density in the lab test in the 100. Usually 90 to 97 percentage of relative compaction can be achieved. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe our channel for more videos like this. Thank you.